don't need a high-end designer or a lot of money to get a luxe look. Be your own interior designer. This is Affordable Interior Design, the podcast. Here's your host, Betsy Hellman. This week's episode is part two of my conversation with Tom Felicia. If you missed last week's, you want to go back and listen to that first and then tune into this one as it's a continued dialogue about design. I will say this. Innovators are always thought to be a little crazy in the beginning because because you're 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 sort of breaking the rules and you're trying to modernize and update and and sort of the way I look at it is that I love having this conversation with somebody who's willing to take a risk and you might find of the seven or eight things you're doing, five of them will be like the way that you will move forward. And the other ones you might modify and change because Mm -hmm. they maybe don't work or they don't work as well as they should. But the thing is, is that walking around with a boat bag full of fabrics and getting on your client's private plane and, you know, and being at their beck and call 24 seven is just not the way the business should work anymore. It isn't. The business should be, we are professionals. It's a professional industry. It is a real thing that you have a degree in. And just like a doctor or a lawyer or an architect or a dentist, you know, it's like there has to be a process and there has to be a way that clients interact with their designers and designers interact with their clients. And it's the idea that we need to be our clients' best friends and tell them what they want to hear and make them feel good about themselves and be their psychiatrist is something that I just think there'll always be a little bit of that, I hope, but it's not what it used to be. And today it's like, we are professionals, we have contracts. We, um, and if people deviate from the contract, they have to be held, you know, held to the contract. And, um, and you know, it's, it's a real profession and it's a, it, there's a lot of money that clients are spending, even when it's affordable, it's a lot of money to, you know, it may seem affordable to the industry, but to that person, they're still spending a lot of hard-earned money. So it's, you know, and, and I love the mix of high, medium, and low because I love that in fashion. I love that in, um, I love that in, uh, uh, you know, food and, and wine. I love finding inexpensive bottles of wine that are delicious. I love mixing that with, you know, Chateau Lafitte Rothschild that like, you know, that you're just like, oh my God. I just, I think that mix is what makes today's world of style so much more captivating because we're mixing high, medium and low. We're mixing, you know, old, vintage, antique, contemporary, uh, you know, mid-century all together and creating our own combination. And what I love about that is that it's not so much about what you should do or what you have to do or the right way to do it. It's about doing it in a way that fits your point of view, your lifestyle. It's about creating interiors that are not only have a sense of place and that are beautiful and stylish and that relate to the architecture and the lifestyle of the, the region, but that they're also tell the story authentically of the people or the person that lives there. And I think that, or the brand that hires you. So I think that is more about where we are. And I think that we would not be where we are if we followed the thematic sort of formulas uh, that were, I think, what got our industry to the point where we could take it to the next level. Right, right. And you know, I love your food analogy because I often think of it as like restaurants, right? There used to be only Jean Georges, if we're thinking about this in the um, yeah. design world, right? There used to be only Jean Georges, only the Rainbow Room, only you know whatever. I don't even know all the fancy ones, right? Yeah. And <laughs> now there's the American Bistro, there's Taco Bell, right? Yeah. And sometimes I want the bean burrito for fifty nine cents, but usually I want the forty five dollar yeah. steak. But, but by the way, you know, so there's a place for everybody. I mean, no, I don't you think don't know what's good if you don't know what's bad, and you don't really know, mm-hmm. you don't to know good Mexican food is to also understand, uh, you know, Tex-Mex and to understand sort of Mexican um, uh, fast food and like, and also to respect a great quality product that is for everybody and college students and young people traveling. And, you know, like 
There's absolutely nothing wrong with a great product that's affordable and that that demographic that requires that product is thrilled. And by the way, I, if, I was, if I was broke, I would save up to go to a really great restaurant and have that experience someday. That's the kind of person I am. And as a person, if I had a ton of money, I would also pull over and go to that taco truck and be like, I wanna know why everybody loves this because it looks amazing. And street food is an inspiration to most top chefs. It's like, yeah. so, you know, being open, going out into the world with your, with your shutter, your aperture open is, is, is you know, I, when I go to a party and I meet somebody who's a, who's a bartender at a local bar and the mayor's there and a bunch of like, you know, fancy pants gays from New York City and like, you know, and like the neighbors who are like kind of conservative and, you know, and are sort of religious, but they like, they love the mix. I love that environment. I love going into a space and leaving and saying, wow, wasn't that interesting that it was like that group mixed with that group and everybody got along and the conversation was pretty easy and people respected each other. I just, I'm like, that's, that to me is cool. I love that in design. I love that in food. I love that in fashion. I love the idea of global influences, street influences. I mean, so much of what influences, like, you know, what, what we see as traditional interior design at one point was like very modern. Billy Baldwin painting French furniture white was like not, that was definitely not, you know, like you're not supposed to do that. It was a cool idea and it looked great and I love it. And now we see it as traditional. And also like when you look at what some fashion designers are doing with like high-end handbags and like graffiti, that's street art. That is street art on a $5,000 handbag. So like when people say to me like, oh, like blah, blah, they get all fancy, I'm like, I don't even think you understand what's happening around you. Like, I don't even think you're smart enough to know that so many of the most amazing things that we eat and that we see, that we wear, are, are coming out of like things that are pretty, pretty, pretty entry level. And that mix of taking something high end and, and mixing it with something that's like, you know, like young people are, are doing, you know, in, in dance is like, or, or graffiti art, is fucking amazing like why not like that is when people are thinking and communicating and sharing and collaborating and to me that's when really cool things happen i agree and i think you know so many people are afraid to evolve or afraid to incorporate those things because they're worried that there won't be a place for them or they won't fit in and i think it's more about you know evolution means that we can all belong and maybe even borrow from yeah, each other. i think I think a lot of times that's just people that are, you know, that really are, you know, when people say things to me like, oh, I, I, you know, I love, I miss the days where, you know, interior designers, you know, like no one could buy things online and yeah. every, and the clients didn't know where anything came from. So they had to come through us. And I'm like, a couple of things. One is that was not a great time professionally because designers were kind of treated like best friends until they did something that pissed off the client and then they were like thrown away and a new person comes in. You know what I mean? There was no like, there was no professionalism in that at that time. And in addition to that, it was like, this is not changing. There, they, you know, like it's not going back to that. Right. So hoping that it does is like, you know, it's it's just it's it's a, it's kind of a big waste of time. You should be more interested in coming up with great ways to make, rather than your value be be your secrets. Your value should be like what you bring to the table professionally, and people should pay for it, and that's it. Like your value should just be like, you know, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to do it, and this is how long it's going to take, and this is how much it's going to cost. And if you don't want to do it, do it yourself. <laughs> you know, it shouldn't be like, well, okay. you don't know where to get that lamp. You don't know where to get that rug. Right. So good luck trying to find it. You know what I mean? Like that used totally. to be the value. Like it was like this whole like hide the coconut game that decorators played. And it was like, I understood why that was at that time, but it just, it is not the way people do business today. And by the way, if you want to be treated as a professional, it's not the way you do it. Right. It's just, well, it's, 
And I love the idea of people think of that as the sort of the golden era or sort of what we should aspire to. But I love the idea of thinking of that as not something that was working back then. But I have one more question for you before, you know, you tell people yeah. where they can find you. Uh, so one last question. Um, people are so excited about design right now. And what are you excited about in design right now? What is maybe a trend or favorite tip or something that's just lighting you up right now that you find yourself drawn to? Well, you know, I mean, I, I think I touched on it earlier. I was talking about sort of, you know, I think it's such an amazing moment in design where it really is about your personal aesthetic. And I think that, you know, I, I talk to so many clients about, you know, looking at what you gravitate towards, looking inward for solutions, not looking for what your friends did or what's in magazines or what's trending, you know, like figure out what you like and figure out what you gravitate towards, like sort of instinctually, like, and, and, and follow those, those leads. Let that be your, your springboard. Now use that and bring it in with things that are happening now in fashion and color and design and, and bring those things together mm -hmm. because you will find that what you create is so much more unique and personalized and it's a great way for all of us that live in this moment of like, the world is our oyster. We all know about, you know, design from all over the world because it's at our fingertips. But now the real question is, but what's your aesthetic? Who are you in design? What you is your- that, that is hitting too no. close to home, Tom. Can I tell you just no. a little disclosure? Just yes. I'm a designer. It's what I do, right? Yeah. Design today. Yes. I just bought a new house in Connecticut. Yes. And I'm paralyzed. You know, I design for other people all day. I design in so many different styles. I don't have a signature style. So I adapt to what they show me they like and who they tell me they are. I am paralyzed. And you know, when you adapt and you're such a chameleon for everybody else, it's just, I spent three hours looking for a dining table. Well, I also think, well, think of it this way. I think what you have to do is you have to step out of your role as the designer and leader and you have to step into the role of like client and you have to be like, first thing you have to ask yourself is, well, you have, you're at your lake house right now in Michigan and you know how you live in that space, right? And you know what you do in the morning and what the family does and what goes on and how it works and what works and what doesn't work. And you said in a little while, you're gonna be out on a floaty in the water. You know your lifestyle there. Yeah. Now you have a new house in Connecticut you have to forecast your lifestyle and say, well, what am I gonna do when I get up in the morning? Oh, I've gotta go here, I've gotta go there, I've gotta do this, I gotta make that. You So you lay that out and that's gonna give you so many of your solutions before you even have to worry about like, is it a is it is it gonna be a boucle or is it gonna be, you know, like, is it gonna be a, a, a chintz? You know what I mean? You don't have to worry about what the fabric is gonna be yet. Right now you have to worry about what the layout's going to be and where the furniture is going to go and which room is going to have a sectional sofa and which room is going to have a, sta a more standard sofa or a pair of sofas and which room is going to be where we have cocktails with friends before we go out and which room is going to be where like everybody's like together on top of each other where we need a, a rug that like people can fall asleep on like you've got to figure those things out and don't worry about what they look like because once you know what the rooms are going to function as and once you get that layout all of a sudden you're a designer, you're gonna to start to see the pieces and go, wait a minute, I think I want that sectional sofa that's gonna go in this room is where everyone's gonna land with a comfortable rug. Now you know like, oh, I'm gonna have like a big heavy knotted rug in here because I want people to pass out while they're watching a movie and I don't wanna to have to deal with like, you know what I mean? Like you want that to be like a party barge. So all of a sudden, so much of what you're, you know, you're going into it like with all these unknowns, and you're like, this room could have this, it could be that, it could be this, it could be that, it could be this, it could be that. It could be like my client's house, it's conservative, or my client's house, it's traditional, or my client's house, it's modern. Now you're like, no, nope, it's got to be like this. And then you also realize the architecture and kind of like the style. Like, you know, sometimes when I'm looking at very traditional homes, I lean a little bit more modern on the interior because I want there to be that balance. And then other times when I'm dealing with something that's a little bit more um you know kind of like you know it's just the opposite like if yeah, the interior yeah, yeah. the modern structure 
I want those interior elements to be warmer and less sleek because I want there to be something for the eye and your soul to grab onto other than like plate glass window. You know what I mean? And I, so, love I love it. I love it. Know? So it, there's so many of the answers that we are looking for um, that clients don't understand where that information comes from, comes from the location, the lifestyle, the architecture, and then of course the lifestyle of the client. So you have to figure out why, well, how you want to live in the house in Connecticut differently than your house at the, at the lake and, and, and what your day to day is going to be like, what your weekends are going to be like, what you'll be doing. And that will give you a lot of um, really great direction, I'd say. I love it. I, I feel inspired right now. Well, before you go, please tell everyone where they can find you, where they can see what you're doing yeah. right now. Well, so you can always go to at Tom Felicia, which is, you know, sort of kind of gives you like all of like sort of what we're doing in social media and all of that sort of thing. My Instagram is, you know, Tom Felicia at Tom Felicia. Uh, you can go to Tom Felicia portfolio and see what our projects look like. Um, uh, there's uh, Sedgwick and Brattle at Sedgwick and Brattle, which is my showroom in New York City. Um, there's uh, the Tom Felicia Home Collection, which is our furniture collection. And we're introducing this market, new furniture, case goods, upholstery at High Point, as well as lighting. We're introducing um, new artwork, new bedding. Um, uh, we have a new uh, a door hardware line with accurate hardware, which is really awesome. Um, and we are, you know, we're always publishing. Um, so you can go to at Tom Felicia and you can uh, and, and sort of uh, sort of find out where new projects are publishing and all that sort of thing. And um, just sort of find out what's new in our space. But, um, you know, I have my design firm, Tom Felicia Incorporated. I have the Tom Felicia Home Collection, which is, uh, you know, a, a variety of different um, you know, from, from, from bedding to window treat, you know, to, uh, to, to, um, window treatment hardware to rugs with Phasey and furniture with Vanguard and all of those things. And some great um, art. I love the art. Art with Windover, which we're very excited about. I can't believe I forgot that. I love Windover. They're the best. And so, you know, I, like we're, we're doing so many different things in that space. And then we have Tom Fleet's home collection. And then, you know, I'm always doing things on TV. So if you ever need to find out what we're doing or where we're going to be or whatever, there's always going to be information at Tom Felicia, but um, it is, uh, it's fun to have the showroom, the furniture collection, the design business, and then also doing sort of media stuff. It sort of keeps me a little bit all over yeah. and, um, and it, it, it makes it for me uh, sort of an ADD human. It keeps it kind of fresh and fun for me. And now I'm going to be, redoing my new house in Sag Harbor, New York, uh, that I'm like, I literally can see Shelter Island from my living room, which is awesome. And um, I'm going to be redoing this. So that'll be, that'll be really fun. But anyways, thank you so much, Betsy, for having me on. You are a superstar. I love uh, catching up with you and hearing about all the exciting things you're doing. And thank you for um, being, uh, uh, you know, um, so kind and generous with your words about your experience with uh, my firm and also just, um, you know, sort of us being, you know, sort of, uh, you know, helpful in, in guiding some of the things that, that you are interested in. Definitely. You were the catalyst for everything I'm doing now. And, you know, looking back, sometimes you don't know what's going to be that pivotal moment, right? Is it a drawing on a desk? Is it an experience at a firm that gave you just so much sort of insight? And uh, for me, that was working for you guys. So thank you so much for being on the show. Absolutely. Thrilled to be here. Thank you so much. This was so much fun, Betsy. I hope to do it again. And um, I, they, they keep talking about making me do a podcast soon. So I will return the favor. <laughs> oh, please do. Please do. I, I've been podcasting for seven years. So if you need any tips and tricks, I'm right here. But I well, love it. Use both. Yeah. And you should do a podcast. Everybody needs a podcast, right? That's so funny. Yeah, I know. I know. Now I'm a little bit more sorted housewise, so I could probably do it. Yeah. But. yeah. Well, think about it. It's not for everyone, but I love it. And I love getting to have conversations with people like you and I'm leaving so inspired. And tonight I'm going to pick my dining table. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to pull the trigger. <laughs> so thank That's you, great. Tom. Wishing you all the best.
You Love too. You. Thank you. Big kiss. Thank you. Bye. A big thank you to Aton and the Embassy who wrote our theme song. A shout out to Catherine Heller who owns the podcast shop and is our editor extraordinaire. We also want to thank Jenny Sunnison and her team at the Savvy Podcast Agency for their help with our social, our YouTube channel, and so much more. We also want to thank Uploft, which is our parent company who supports this podcast. And lastly, we owe a huge debt of gratitude to you. Thank you so much for tuning in and for all your support. <laughs>